Okay. Okay. It didn't ask us if we wanted to accept the record this time. So I guess it's automatic. Okay. This is to call the to order the Wilmette Public Library trustees regular meeting for August 17th, 2021 at 641 p.m. Notices have been posted updating uh, the change from in person to remote due to the resurgence of COVID and the governor allowing us to meet remotely. And so at this time, we would like to have the roll call. Director Austin. Certainly. Um, so uh, Trustee Barshas has resigned and we're gonna be addressing that here on the board. So she is no longer a member of the board as of our roll call. So our board members that are present this evening are Trustee Fishman. Here. Trustee O'Keefe. Here. Trustee Nealon. Trustee Nealon. Here. I'm here. Trustee Riddle is absent. Uh, Trustee Summer. Here. And Trustee McDonald. Here. Okay. And at, the, and at this time, we would like to ask, I'd like to ask uh, Trustee O'Keefe to serve as interim secretary with Jan's departure, resignation. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you for agreeing. Okay, at this time, is there anyone that would like any uh, attendees who wish to address the board at this time? Going once, going twice. Would you like to also, uh, Director Austin, cite the staff that are here as well as the visitor? Sure. I see that we have uh, uh, Pamela Lurie, Elizabeth Seeger, and um, from the staff, I see that we've got um, Marty Belfontaine, Patsy Devono, Gail Justman, and John Risco, okay. and myself. Thank you. Okay. Behind, you've seen the uh, minutes. The minutes were distributed for your review two weeks ago. Are there any corrections to the minutes? May I have? Is, is it possible to have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of June, July 20th, 2021 as presented? I move to approve the minutes of the regular July 2021 meeting as presented, corrected. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Okay, Trustee Summers has seconded the uh, approval of the minutes. It's been moved and seconded. Moved by uh, Trustee Fishman. <laughs> Fishman, I want to say, I was going to say, who knows what I was going to say. Trustee Fishman is seconded by Trustee Summer to approve the minutes of the July 20th, 2021 meeting as presented. Is there any additional discussion? Can we have a roll call, Director Austin? Certainly, and just to clarify, I believe that was Trustee Nealon that did that second on that oh. motion. Um, okay, so our <laughs> our roll call is uh, Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. Okay, at this time we turn it over to Treasurer Summer to go over the Treasurer's report. Good and evening. I say it's been moved. Uh, it's, wait a minute, I forgot to say it's been moved and seconded and passed unanimously. The minutes have been approved for July 20th, 2021. Okay, there. Thank you, Trustee Summer. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I first want to thank John. I know, you, I believe you are in the middle of doing your audit or in the process and I want to thank you for getting all these documents and answering all my questions before the meeting when I know you're really busy. So thank you, John and Anthony. I appreciate that. Um, I reviewed all the financials. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but a couple of things I just want to uh, point out. 
if you look through the, um, there was a third payroll this this month, and as a result, the percentage is a little bit over the one month, which I believe is about eight percent. But that's to be expected. Um, a couple of things that I noted: one is there's a check that was written to ComEd that was um, for the Special Reserve Fund, but was written out of the checking account, and that has been corrected. I've already talked to them about that. Um, and uh, let's see, I part hold. All right, and then uh, I had a question that was answered. I had a question about a uh, charge to Chase for a staff rec recognition. And I know they've been trying to do an event which is, keeps being postponed, but in the meantime, they've made available to the staff um, uh, some branded library wear. Did anyone have any questions on any of the financial statements or any of the checks for which I didn't address the question? All right, then I, uh, I move to approve the bills and salaries and the check detail for July, 2021. Is there a Would second? Like oh. I'll second. Okay. It's been moved by trustee Summer and seconded by trustee Fishman to approve the bills and salary check detail for July, 2021. Can, and any additional discussion? Okay, having none. Director Austin. Sure. Um, Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. It's been moved, seconded, and passed unanimously to approve the bills and salary check detail for July 2021 by a vote of five to zero. Okay. At this time, we move to the action items, but before that, I know uh, Director Austin, I saw one of the gray jackets that the staff were wearing. It was part of the promotion. And it looked made them look very professional and they liked the they said they liked them a lot so a couple of them commented about how much they appreciated that so thank you for taking care of them during this time you all received a notice at this time we're moving to action item and we're moving to ordinance number 2021-22-20 to accept the resignation declare a vacancy and appoint a new trustee and uh, do I need to read this? Okay. And uh, before I read it, I, was, I would just say that we really appreciate Trustee Barshees and she appreciated the staff's card and gifts from the, that you all sent her the, the uh, plant and the candy, but she was most moved by the staff's comments on the card. And even though we will miss her at the meeting, I'm sure that she will peek around the library. And she was a wonderful advocate for Go Green. And I just really, and as well as she always wanted to make sure that we did something for the staff or acknowledge them, be it the holidays or staff recognition. So her presence will be missed. So now I can go on and read this, okay. Okay, Jan Barshi's vacancy. And the other thing that I want to say is when she resigned, I sent a note to all the trustees and cited the ordinance and I asked them to contact me if they had any thoughts as to how they might want to fill that vacancy. And uh, four of the trustees that contacted me suggested that uh, Stuart Wolf, who's a former trustee, be appointed and I guess based on that. He has uh, experience. He ran for office the last election. He uh, was a trustee for eight years. He served as vice president as well as on numerous committees. And I, I noted that, that he always sort of had a different way of looking at things. And it's always good to have a different eye with his marketing experience and movie creation and writing experience. So 
I just wanted to give that before I read that as to that this, you know, how this came about in terms of his appointment, and we can discuss it afterwards before voting on it. Ordinance number 2021-22-2 award 01. Ordinance to accept a resignation, declare a vacancy, and appoint a new trustee. Jan Barshi's vacancy. Whereas Jan Barshis was previously elected as a library trustee for a term which ex expires in April 2023, and whereas Barshis recently submitted a letter advising that she has resigned from her role as library trustee, and whereas the Public Library District Act of 1991, 75 ILCS 16-1-1, it's sequi, I don't know what that stands for. The act provides the vacancies in the office of library trustee shall be declared by the library board when a trustee declines to serve. And whereas under the act, vacancy shall be filled by appointment of the remaining library trustee until the next regular library election. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the library trustees of the Wilmette Public Library District as follows. The library trustees hereby accept Trustee Barshi's res resignation, B, declare a vacancy in the office of the library trustee, and C, appoint Stuart Wolf to fill the vacancy effective Monday, September 20th, 2021, to serve until the regular library election on April 20th, 2023. And so, at this time, is there anyone that would like to move to approve it? Okay, Trustee Summer. I move to approve, oh, I gotta get my wording here. I move to approve um, the ordinance 2021-22-20 to accept the resignation, declare a vacancy and appoint a new trustee. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Trustee Fishman. It's been moved by Trustee Summer and seconded by Trustee Fishman to approve the ordinance number 2021-22-201. Ordinance to accept a resignation, declare a vacancy and appoint a new trustee, Stuart Wolf. At this time, is there any discussion? in terms of your thoughts or Trustee Fishman? I just want to second your um, nice and um, appropriate um, thank you. And um, uh, we will totally miss Jan, her um, care and concern and her um, ability, as you mentioned, to always be keep the staff and thank the staff for their hard work and dedication and to her uh, recommendations that we follow green initiatives for the library. And she was instrumental in the new van that we have, uh, were fortunate to acquire that is a um, hybrid, I believe, and, um, or electric, I, I can't recall, but it's got a, it's very okay. um, or green and very earth friendly. And that was always on Jan's uh, first and foremost. So we will totally miss her, but understand that, um, that is her choice and look forward to having Stuart Wolf come back on the board. His, um, he has, as you say, a, a, a very um, open mind and um, a, a vision that I think will add, uh, has added and will continue to add to our board and a commitment to our community. So I, I think it's a fine recommendation. Okay, any other discussion? Trustee Newman. I also appreciate um, Stuart's experience um, uh, with new members on the board. It is, I think it's going to be uh, a real boost to have uh, his experience to talk things over with them, to get his perspective. And um, yeah, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a good suggestion and I look forward to working with him again. Okay, anything else? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. It's been moved by Trustee Summer, seconded by Trustee Fishman, and 
to uh, <laughs> approve ordinance number 2021-22 slash 22-201. Can we have the roll call? Certainly. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. Thank you. It's been moved and passed by five to zero that we adopt ordinance number 2021-22-201. Okay. At this time, we need to elect uh, someone from the board to serve as secretary, since Jan was that position and it's been vacated. And I would like to uh, nominate Trustee O'Keefe, Marianne O'Keefe. Is there a second? Okay. I will second. Okay. Uh, it's been moved by Trustee McDonald. Am I not supposed to do it? And seconded by Trustee Fishman to uh, elect uh, Trustee O'Keefe as our secretary for the Wilmette Public Library District. Is there any additional discussion? Any discussion, not additional, but discussion, period. Okay. Oh, I, I guess I'll just say uh, thank you to Mary Ann. We appreciate her stepping in and um, I know she'll do a fine job and she's well experienced from Friends of the Library. So she will make an excellent secretary. And she doesn't have to type the minutes. <laughs> that was her first question. She doesn't have to type. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> okay, so it's been moved and seconded. And so let's do a roll call and discussion. Okay. okay. All right. Um, Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Uh, Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. The motion passed five to zero and welcome our new secretary, Trustee Marianne O'Keefe. We look forward to working with you even more. Okay. At this point, we're going to turn it over to Treasurer Summer and Director Austin for ordinance number 2021 slash 2220, our annual budget and appropriation ordinance for library purposes for the fiscal year 2021-22. Anthony, can I let you take the lead on this, please? Certainly. Um, so um, this evening, August 17th, 2021, we did hold um, a public hearing regarding the budget and appropriation ordinance immediately prior to convening our meeting and um, invited the opportunity for the community to comment on the ordinance. And um, we did not have anyone speak. Um, the document that is in the packet this month is identical to the one that the board uh, reviewed and approved at our July 20th, 21 meeting and passed in its tentative form. Um, the packet information that you have um, reflects the updated information. Um, there's some additional documentation that's been provided as well and some supplementary uh, background information about what the three main um, financial um, uh, instruments are that the library uses each year um, as part of its budgeting, appropriating, and levying process. Um, so there's a little bit more foundational background that we provide everyone this time of the year to get a little bit better picture of how the library governs itself and organizes its finances. Um, so uh, that background information we did discuss a little bit last month, and I'm happy to take any other questions um, from the board if we want to get into a little bit more depth about that. And um, Trustee Summer, if there's anything else that you would like to add as, as part of our discussion here this evening, um, certainly open to your comments as well. I don't have anything to add because I think based on your comments, we there were no comments from the public and we as the board approved it and there are no changes to it from last time. So unless there were comments for the public we needed to address, I don't think there's anything else to say. Okay. Okay. Can we have a motion to adopt it? I um, I move to approve the ordinance twenty ordinance number twenty twenty one slash twenty two two hundred, 
annual budget and appropriation ordinance for library purposes for the fiscal year 2021 2022. Is there a second? A second. Okay, so it's been moved by Trustee Summer and seconded by Trustee Nealon to, appro to approve ordinance number 2021-22-200 annual budget and appropriation ordinance for library purposes for the fiscal year 2021-22. Any additional discussion? Okay, can we have a roll call? Certainly. Director Austin. All right, Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. The motion passed five to zero. Thank you for your support. Okay, now we're moving to the Illinois State Library Annual Report, IPLAR for fiscal year 20. 21, Trustee O'Keefe and Nealon conducted the secretary audit on August 6th. Thank you. And uh, it's completed. It's a condition for filing the report. And the report is what's needed for us to get our per capita grant. And last year we got between thirty-four, thirty-five thousand dollars dollars $35,000. So th that's the reason why we do this for the Secretary of State. But it's also an excellent time way to capture the statistics as to what goes on in the library. Do you want to talk a little bit more about it? Sure. Um, also, the IPLAR document uh, compiles the official um, uh, statistics for the library for the last fiscal year. And that information is then forwarded on to the national uh, statisticians in library land who um, also pick up our statistics through Library Journal and ultimately will confer um, recognition such as the five star rating that we've received the last couple of years um, for our performance. So there are a number of reasons why we want to compile and study this information. Um, I want to give a lot of credit this year to our leadership team, who many of whom were compiling this data for the first time. Um, as you know, we've experienced a, quite a substantial change in our organization in the last year, um, certainly due to COVID, um, but we also experienced a number of retirements from some of the key personnel that helped us to compile this information historically. So it was a bit of a learning curve for a number of us as we um, took the study to look back at this information and the way that it was compiled in a particularly unusual year as it is, um, with a lot of our programming having gone virtual and um, with our schedule um, having a little bit of disruption, um, including that closure that we experienced from November to early February. Um, but uh, we were able to compile that information and get it into the packet in time for you all to review this evening. I believe that what you're reviewing here is the um, official information that we are going to submit. Uh, the document is due at the end of the month, so we do have a little bit of time to go back over and make sure that our statistics are absolutely correct before we submit them. Um, if there's anything that you would like to, to call out in particular, I'm happy to discuss that, but I will say that I'm not quite ready to do a comparative analysis with this data until we've um, actually made this, this information official and then can compare with past years. And um, particularly, I want to compare this past year to our pre-COVID numbers and just see where our performance has been as far as that's concerned. But I'm happy to discuss anything that you may have observed um, in this packet of information. I will make one note. You will note that we um, do report all of our trustee information um, at the top of this. And I did receive a question from a trustee asking um, with trustee Barchus's resignation and now just appointing trustee Wolf, do we need to amend this information accordingly? And effectively what this is, is a snapshot of our fiscal year um, last year as of June 30th. So at that time, trustee Barchus was in fact on the board and she was on the, uh, one of our trustees. So her information is still correct and is included in, in that report um, as is. But um, any other questions or comments on um, the IPLA report as presented? Were there any surprises that you feel free to discuss at this time or do you want to wait? You know, I think um, we were really excited to see the way that the door counts rebounded. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were feeling more confident as our COVID mitigation strategies move forward. And, um, you know, I think as our our parking lot pickup model um, picked up. Our circulation numbers were a lot stronger than I think we were expecting them to be considering what an unusual year it was. Um, frankly, I was really impressed by the training numbers. Um, as you know, our staff having gone remote um, in March of 2020 did undertake a lot of remote training. And um, when this fiscal year kicked off in June, 
uh, or in July rather uh, of 2020, um, the staff continued that trend and in fact really ramped up a lot of their um, remote training in terms of webinars and workshops and so on. So I'm really impressed by the way that the staff remained engaged even in a remote environment, which in fact this week we're doing again for a couple of weeks and I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. But um, those were the, I think the key points that, um, that I noted initially. But like I said, I'll, I'll get into a little bit more analysis um, here at a future meeting. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Can we have a motion to approve the Illinois State Library annual report for fiscal year 2021? I move uh, approval of the Illinois State Library annual report IPLAR for fiscal year 2020-2021. Okay, is there a second? I second. Okay. So it's been moved by Trustee Summer and second by Trustee Fishman to approve. Uh, to Excuse me, Lisa, I believe it was Trustee O'Keefe who got there. Okay, I can't, always see red there and she changes it back real quick. So thank you. I'm gonna have you all start because I don't I, I'll know your names. You're, I'll know the voices eventually. Very so right. Trustee Summer moved and Trustee O'Keefe seconded the motion. Any additional discussion? It's been moved and seconded. Can we have a roll call? Certainly. Austin. Uh, Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. It's been moved and seconded and it passed by uh, five to zero. Five in favor, nobody against. Okay, at this point we move to discussion items. And so you've been busy, so look forward, Director <laughs> Austin, to hearing the annual, the, the capital repair project and construction closure update. Certainly, yes. Um, it, it's been a uh... It's been a busy last month as we've been getting prepared for um, what just kicked off yesterday. So as you know, um, the library is closed um, to the, the building itself is closed. Um, the library services remain open. Many of them are 24 seven. The staff are still available remotely via email and via our Mozio chat service. Um, and our website is really functioning as, as the branch of the library um, during these next two weeks. Um, our remote book drops are closed at this time because the library building has no electricity and therefore we have no base of operation for us to be able to collect materials, to store them, and um, to effectively handle anything uh, that we might be acquiring over the course of the next couple of weeks. So um, we're on a little bit of a pause. And as a result, the staff has been preparing um, a number of steps in order to get us to where, the, to where we're at right now. And part of that involved partnerships with some of our neighboring libraries. So um, early on in, in July, we did a lot of communications to patrons about how to manage their holds during this time, obviously with circulation um, not being available of materials. Um, we were trying to encourage our patrons to collect their materials as soon as possible from the library uh, to get their holds. Um, and the overwhelming majority of holds were picked up um, before we closed up shop on um, August 14th, uh, that Saturday. And um, uh, a few patrons have elected to pick up their holds um, from some of our peer libraries, like Winnetka Northfield during this time. Um, and then they can revert back to home uh, to their home library here at Wilmette. Um, in uh, when we reopen again on September 1. So um, a lot of work was done in order to get us prepared for where we're at right now. And I guess the key piece I need to share with you all is, well, why the heck is the library closed right now? Well, um, it is because we've got a, a couple substantial projects that are very involved and require the building to be closed in order for that work to be completed. The main piece of this relates to the electrical main at the library. So that's the main power that comes off of the power pole from ComEd on the outside and runs through conduit into the building. Um, that, that power distribution system is dated, um, is worn, and is out of code and needs to be replaced. Um, it also requires that there is a single point of shutoff for all the electrical in the building to meet fire safety code. And unfortunately, the existing system did not. And therefore, um, we are going through and we're updating a lot of that gear and equipment from the point where it comes into the building down into the basement, where it then goes through the power distribution to the various electrical panels throughout the building. 
Now, a number of those electrical panels were outdated and needed to be updated and replaced. Some of them um, throughout the building, in fact, have not been used for a number of years and were abandoned um, as part of other uh, renovation projects. So part of our, our task here is to also clean up a number of things um, that were lingering uh, that, have, that are, are deprecated or no longer necessary. So um, this project is to address that as well as even some smaller items like some, there's some cloth wire from some previous iterations of the library um, that we're cleaning up and uh, trying to take care of those details. Um, so that's the main part of the work that we're completing is, is primarily electrical. And that required that the power to the building be cut off um, however, the staff needed to work remotely uh, to maintain services during this time, so we negotiated with ComEd to have a single line of power run into the building um, before, uh, where, uh, before we cut off um, in order to power up our servers and have a lot of our, our remote, uh, remote work software up and running for staff. Uh, so that was effectively completed last week and turned on, tested, uh, that worked, so we've got staff who are working remotely now. Um, as well as our facilities team and credit to our, our facilities team for working a rotating schedule to be in the building um, for a couple hours, um, you know, uh, backing each other up. They're, they've got a schedule where they'll work a few hours and someone will come and relieve them. So they're not in a hot building in the dark all day, but um, it, it's good for us to have a couple staff in the building to keep an eye on things. There's still a lot to do to maintain the building, even when it is not open to the public and even when it doesn't have power. In fact, we're doing a lot of work outdoors as well. So um, the power is obviously a big piece of this. Um, so I was on site today to check out um, the work that was going on electric wise. And there were multiple um, contractors inside the building working on that. Um, we've also got some low voltage work that's being done as well as part of the electrical project. That's the installation of our new fire alarm system, our new security camera system, as well as our new access control system. Uh, access control is just another way of saying keys. Uh, so we've, we're going to have um, a new FOB system that is going to control a lot of the key access around the building, including the main entrances. Um, so staff will have will have access to, to these FOBs and uh, we'll have a better key management now, but it's going to be done digitally. Um, so that's a big part of the project that's in motion right now. And we expect that that will be substantially complete before uh, the power is turned back on. Um, we're targeting August 30th for the power to be lit back up so that we can then uh, take a day on August 31st to power back on all the air handling units, get all of our computers and everything plugged back in because we did unplug every single item in the library um, during this time so that when the power does come back on, we don't inadvertently um, cause a surge and potentially destroy some of our equipment. So that was one of the tasks that staff had uh, this past weekend was to go around and unplug everything in the building. Um, so I checked on that part of the, uh, the project here today. Um, and um, we're going along really well. We're actually ahead of schedule. The electrical crew is going to be working 10-hour uh, shifts over the course of the next week in an effort to get ahead of this project so that there's enough room at the end if we need to have some contingency for any aspects that might not go exactly as planned. So we got a really good electrician crew that's working on the project for us. And uh, the construction manager and I are, are really impressed with what we're seeing so far. Um, we were also impressed with a number of aspects of the project early on, including the tuck pointing. And our tuck pointer was back today after um, there was some demolition done to the original electrical gear. Um, since we are not powered on, um, that gave the opportunity for the tuck pointer to come back and finish all the masonry and brickwork cleanup that was done around that electrical equipment. Um, I can tell you for certainty that we have never tuck pointed around that area before because the power has never been off to the building before like that. So um, power washing um, and uh, the tuck pointing and a bunch of brick cleanup and whatnot, removing um, all that old gear from the side of the building. Um, all of that work was in motion this morning when I arrived and um, is looking really sharp. So we're, we're excited about that aspect. And speaking of masonry and brick, um, the parking lot project is also underway. That began yesterday. Uh, they were bringing up the permeable pavers, um, starting with the exit, which is the worst part of the parking lot right now. Um, so that part um, exiting to the west, they're working backwards. Um, so pulling up all of the bricks, uh, putting down uh, new gravel for the underlayment um, so that it is level. Um, basically what we're trying to do, this is 10 year maintenance to the, to the uh, permeable lot. 
Uh, there's a bunch of trenching that's happening where they uh, where the wheel ruts um, are. So they're taking care of that detail. Um, and where the wheel turns are back by the book drop on the east side of the parking lot is where they'll be by the end of this week um, doing that cleanup. And then at the end of uh, the uh, parking lot uh, project, they'll be restriping everything. So we'll um, have new bright yellow um, lines out there to kind of mark where you're supposed to park and to identify the drive lanes and so on. So, um, so that, that aspect of the project is going along really well. Um, the other piece that's gonna be completed while we're closed um, is, um, what was the other piece that we're doing while we're closed? <laughs> it's those two things. It's, it's the electrical and the masonry and the parking lot, those three items. Yes, okay. Um, so like I said, we're targeting um, August 30th for ComEd to turn back on the power to the building. The staff will come back in and uh, we'll do some cleanup. We're also going to be having um, uh, the lower level work uh, with the, the water remediation project should be substantially complete by that time. Um, so the walls are back on the wall right now. Um, the, the concrete foundation was poured last week. Um, so we'll be able to restore the flooring, um, get the wall. The walls were taped and everything. So they'll be painted by the end of this week. And, um, and then we'll be able to reinstall the shelving on those walls, get the carpeting back on, get the collections back on that shelving um, and move back the shelving. Um, we'll have hallet movers come back out and uh, relocate the shelving that was relocated down there. Um, as part of that project. And um, then we're gonna have our, our carpet cleaner come in and uh, clean up a lot of the dust and debris that was left over. And then all of that will be ready for us to, um, to have for September 1. So, so that's kind of the a, a, a synopsis of what we've been doing with the construction project thus far. Um, we are on target time-wise um, and we're within our budget. Um, we did probably have to dip into our contingency a little bit for that drain tile project. As you know, there were a few things that we discovered in that when we took the walls off the wall and we actually discovered that concrete masonry uh, behind there that needed to be updated. Um, there was quite a lot of, quite a lot of spoils from a pre previous project that was holding water and we needed to clean out that debris to do more investigative work. But I really feel that the crew that did that project um, really gave us what I would call a belt and suspenders type of solution. We're not gonna end up having any water infiltration issues there. Um, we had kind of a wet and soggy um, period there in, in July, August with some heavy rains and some unusual windy conditions that um, if there were gonna be an issue, uh, I think we would have discovered it then. And um, thankfully knock wood, uh, we didn't have any issues um, with, with those rainy events. So we think we got it. Um, so we're really excited uh, to, to have this um, really invasive part of the project behind us and uh, have a solid foundation, uh, pun intended, uh, to move forward. So um, any, any questions or comments on the construction project um, as it stands today? Just thank you and Marcus and his, Marcos and his team for helping things go so smoothly as well as the staff. Uh, things are on time. Thank you. Um, I yeah, do have Joan. a quick question. Um, hopefully we won't have hot, hot weather like we've had. How long does it take the building to cool down once they power back up? Yeah, so, um, you know, we're opening on September 1. Um, we're going to power the building back on on the 30th. So I, I think it's it might be a little a little uncomfortable on the top floor. I mean, I was up there today in my office for a minute and uh, it's pretty stuffy, but the lower level really held the cool. And um, so I think it shouldn't be too bad to, to get us back in operation again. Okay, thank you. Just correction, did you say, when are they gonna do the painting downstairs? Because the way you sounded, it sounded like they were gonna do it while the electricity's off and there's no way they can see. So when is the painting gonna occur? It, it is in fact being done in the dark, um, but not really in the dark. They're able to bring in some um, some lighting units to, to you know light the spaces that they're going to be in. So okay. painters do that kind of thing in dark spaces all the time, apparently. So they're they're prepared. Okay. Thank you. But yeah, good catch. Now, I was just curious because I'm thinking it's dark down there. But actually, it's been cool the last couple of days, so let's hope they get as much work as they can before the heat sets in and tomorrow. Yep. Okay. Uh, are you ready to do your director's report? Certainly. All right. So um, 
again, a lot of preparation from our team here in July to get to where we are right now. Um, as I've said before, August and particularly the end of August tends to be a little bit quieter for us. And that is why our construction manager and I agreed that this was probably the best time for us to complete this project with the least amount of disruption. So a lot of communications and a lot of legwork on the staff's behalf um, over the course of the, of the month of July to get us to the point where we are right now. Um, but a couple of highlights that I wanna share with you from my report and then any questions that you've got, we can go from there. Um, so kind of going in, in order through the report, I wanted to point out that um, our business librarian, John Amundsen, um, is really taking a fresh set of eyes to our business resources and the space that we've allocated to promoting our, our services to the business community and to folks um, who are investigating their personal finance and so on. And we've actually, we're, we're starting to really develop this space over by the reference desk. So uh, the reference desk is the south side of the, of the first floor. And um, right in front of that is our, is our business area. And um, that area has seen a lot of development. We've installed some new lighting in that area. We've moved a lot of collections around. We brought some periodicals down from the periodicals room uh, to really create a better destination for those resources. And I'm, I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing so far. And John has been really active with um, the Chamber of Commerce in recent months and is just really doing a great job to, to connect the library to the greater business community so far. Um, so really impressed with what I'm seeing there and I think that's going to continue. So I wanted to call your attention to that. Um, obviously, the, uh, one of the other big projects we've got going on right now is our website redesign project. Um, right now, this is still kind of, it's in our contractor's hands at the moment. So Library Market has effectively received everything it needs from the staff in order to do the design development portion of this and to load a lot of the content. Library Market is responsible for uh, transferring approximately 50% of the content from our current website um, over to the new site. And then the staff, once we, we have an opportunity to, to go through and review the work that they've done and say, yes, this is what we're looking for and refine any other things that might be on our punch list design-wise, um, then they'll hand the keys over to the staff and then we'll start loading our content onto the site in an effort to get it ready for our focus groups in, in September to be able to go through and to have a preview of the site and to make some comments and suggestions on what they're seeing uh, regarding the development of the website. Um, so the board is invited and we're going to be giving you all access to that in September, um, but that's still a few weeks away for us and there's a, a lot more um, content loading that's going on at the moment. So stay tuned, we'll give you more information about the launch of the website, but we're looking like uh, by the end of September, we'll have a brand new site to, to unveil for everyone. Um, in terms of the collections, uh, a couple points that I want to share with you. Um, our Hot Picks collection um, has resumed um, and has been super popular. In fact, um, the, the Hot Picks shelving, which is right across from the circulation desk, um, was the subject of a photo that I took on March 13th uh, that got wide circulation in library land um, of what a library that looks really successful um, can look like right before it closes for a pandemic. Effectively, there were maybe like four or five books left on the shelves on that day that we had to announce our closing. And in the days leading up to our closing on this last Saturday on August 14th, that shelving unit started to look about the same. Um, it was really picked over by that end of day on that Saturday. Um, so I can tell you our patrons are still very much satisfied with what they're seeing on that Hot Picks collection. Um, and they like to be able to discover some of the best and new things when they come in. So that's still surging in its popularity. Um, also really popular are our periodicals, which um, have recently been, uh, that room has been reopened to the public as of July and um, has been a popular destination for our patrons ever since we reopened it. Uh, a lot of folks love to come and read the paper and our various magazines. Um, so in terms of collections, we've also, as I mentioned at last month's meeting, we've substantially completed the RFID tagging project. I can say we have effectively completed the tagging of the RFID um, project at this time. The CD project is complete. Um, the only thing that really remains at this point is for us to get that automated material handling system installed. Um, and that is slated to be done um, probably the end of September. I'm still waiting for confirmation about when we're gonna see that equipment. Um, but right on the heels of completing our project uh, for construction, we're gonna see that new equipment installed in that shelving room. Sure. So looking forward to that. Um, and in terms of uh, some other details regarding shelving, um, 
the shelving for our uh, on the lower level for our oversized collection is um, on order and due to arrive in late September as well. Um, the oversized collection is the last remaining collection on the mezzanine. Um, so kind of right up above Lisa's head in this picture that um, in her background, you can see the mezzanine up there. You can see that there's some shelving stacks up above her. That's an old picture. We don't have any stacks up there really in the, in the, uh, the middle of the room anymore. It's all, sh it's all um, uh, seating and study spaces up there. But um, kind of off to the right hand side of that picture is where the oversized collection is right now. And we want to unify that down with um, the rest of its peers on the lower level uh, so that the rest of the nonfiction collection is all immediately accessible. So we've got some new shelving on order for that. That'll go in, in, uh, in September and that will effectively take the last of the items off the mezzanine and make that a destination for uh, just for um, uh, study spaces. Um, and that area that it's designated for is immediately to the left of Books Down Under. And I'm thrilled to report that Books Down Under is going to be reopening in September as well. I've confirmed with the friends that our volunteers are ready to get back to work. Um, the friends um, had a, a fabulous book sale, a uh, pop-up sale the weekend of um, the Chamber of Commerce's sidewalk sale on Saturday, July 17th. Um, I don't have the final number in front of me, but I believe it was close to $1,500 that the friends brought in at that sale, which is outstanding when you consider the limited amount of time that they were out there and the fact that the books were about a dollar a piece. So that's a lot of material. Um, and from what I understand, Margo, the, 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 the board president, um, was actually schlepping books up and down a fair bit during the sale. Um, the minute she would bring a, a cart up, um, they would say, quick, go down and get more. We need more. Um, so we know that our community is really excited to get the used bookstore back up and running, and we're thrilled to report that in September sometime, um, we're going to get the, um, that crew back in back in the basement, and we're going to start resuming collection of our, um, uh, our donations as well, because we've been holding off on donations um, up until this point. So BDU should be back open soon. Um, couple more points I'll share with you real briefly. Um, it was a big programming month for youth services. You can see that those statistics in my report. Um, we, we held uh, story time six times a week um, outdoors in person, uh, hugely popular with families. And um, I would say the overwhelming majority of our program participation in July was due in part to those on-site story time programs that we held. Um, uh, you may recall we kicked off our summer reading program with Jim Gill. He did a music program for us. And um, he also was going to create a personalized music video for Wilmette Library based upon uh, the art and stories of our children. And he completed that project. And that video is up on our YouTube page right now. And if you haven't seen it already, um, be prepared. It might make you a, a, a little misty. It's a, it's a beautiful video. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, and then lastly, I would say is that, um, and speaking of programming, um, our adult services and, and uh, communications and event staff are really excited to kick off another year of programming with our author programming events. We're going to have a, a couple meet the author events coming up this fall. Um, TBD, don't have anything to share with you at this moment, but we're thrilled to be able to get that underway um, with the partnership that we have with our programming partners. And uh, that will um, conclude with our uh, One Book Everyone Reads program next spring. Uh, so that's all I've got for my report at this time. Um, if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to, to take them. Just one quick question. You, you, you uh, signed up a bunch of new people for library cards. When did we? When did it become available to do, apply for a library card online? And do you think that's the reason for the increase? Yeah, we um, we did start doing um, online registrate pre-registration for library cards. We started that in the early months of the pandemic. I think that was I think April. We didn't get it kicked off right away, but I believe in April we were, we launched that service. Um, and I do think that that convenience owes in part to that. Um, We've got 500 new students apparently starting in D39 um, this fall as well. And I anticipate that we're gonna hear a little bit more from D39 about that pre-registration as well, because that's been a strong partnership for us in getting a number of cards into kids' hands. 
Um, but that, yeah, I think I think the pre-registration owes in part to that, but I don't have those metrics right in front of me right now. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the director's report? Thank you, Anthony. All right, thank you. Okay, at this time we do the committee reports. Trustee Nealon, do you have anything for ILA? I do not, but okay. uh, we'll be ongoing. Gotcha. Director Austin, anything for Rails ILA? Uh, no report from Rails. Um, I would just say that um, in terms of ILA, the, the conference is remote this fall. Anyone who has an interest in attending the conference, um, be sure to let me know. And the other thing is I sent out a note for United for Library. So you, if you were interested, you should have gotten a link. They started uh, the virtual conference today. They have had some interesting discussions, but they will be recording all of them so that look at them at a later time if you're interested and some of the topics include life cycle of a board member how to build a powerhouse board uh tips tricks and tools building a better budget then tomorrow how to be an inclusive leader your role in creating a culture of belonging where everyone can thrive that's more a anthony <laughs> session but it also applies to the board you know, vaccine hunter house line so they got every volunteer and advocate so they have stuff that's relevant for both the friends as well as the trustees. So if you're still interested, it's United for Libraries virtual site. They're part of the ALA and tra traditionally they would do when the ALA midwinter and they didn't do it this year, they would have a trustee conference that would, you know, one day before. Okay. Uh, Lisa, Lisa? Will be, yes. Will we be notified if uh, when the recordings will be available? Uh, if you've registered, you should. I didn't get a note today, and so uh, Anthony's going to check because we should have gotten the three of. I think three of us have said said we wanted to participate, but I didn't get a link to it today. So we will get a link. I didn't. I didn't either. Yeah. So you will check on it for all three of us to double check, and if anybody else is interested, just contact him. Okay, but I didn't get one either. I just you know, so I'm pretty much waiting for that. Yep. We'll, we'll let you know first thing um, that, that as soon as we find out, we'll let you know. Okay. Um, and the, and like and like you said, the, the, they are recorded, so you can access them anytime, even after um, the conference is over. Okay. You talked about the, oh yeah. And then this is just another update. The policy committee will probably not meet till December if possible. And at that point we will review library facilities, collection management policy, libraries, facilities, and the collection management policies, as well as the appendix for surveillance. And so Anthony and his staff, when things settle down, will be, and his uh, leadership team will be working on that. So we look at, at uh, doing those sometime then. And then probably in January, I think one of the starts for the strategic plan and one of the things I think we talked about briefly is because things are so topsy turvy that if the and a lot of the things have have been accomplished, but there's still a lot yet to accomplish with the existing plan that the plan will not start till probably June of 2022. And so one of the first things that Director Austin is going to do is just do an update, sort of like a scorecard of what's been achieved, and then we'll start bringing in departments, uh, the heads. Of different departments at each meeting to do updates as to, you know, not necessarily strength SWOT analysis, but also in terms of where they see the future trends and generally what's working and what could be improved. Okay, so that's that. And then I think any other uh, announcements or new business? Did you have any comments from the suggestion box? Okay. So given that there, is there any additional new business that anybody would like to talk about? Being none, can we have a motion to adjourn? Okay, Trustee Fisher. I move to adjourn the board now at uh, the board meeting at 7.34. Okay, is there a second? I second. I will second. Okay. <laughs> can you hear <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Fishman moved, and we're going to give it to Trustee O'Keefe, seconded it, so everybody has done one. And so, uh, all in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye. This concludes the meeting and have a good rest of summer before school starts for those with kids.